What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey and today we're going to be talking about Redis and implementing Redis as well, not just talking about it. <laughs> so if you don't know what Redis is, I'm just give you the shorthand version of it. Redis is a in-memory data structure store that could be used as a database cache or a message broker. It supports data structures such as strings, hashes, lists, sets, sorted lists with range queries. I mean, it supports a lot of things. It, you name it, it probably uh, supports it, okay? Now, you might be wondering why are we using Redis and not a database, like a, a SQL or a NoSQL database. Well, the reason why is because it's in memory. It's faster. It's way faster. It uses our RAM instead of hard drives. Now, don't get me wrong. You shouldn't be using Redis for storing everything. And the reason why is because it's, it's much more expensive not much more, but it is expensive, more expensive than a regular database. And the reason why is because, like I said, it's using your RAM. And RAM isn't cheap. Hard drives are cheap. RAM isn't. Especially if you're doing, like, if you're trying to cash into the SSDs. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's not that, it's not, it's not cheap. I'll tell you that much. And since we're using a uh, e-commerce or since we're building out an e-commerce sites, I'm going to give you two scenarios why you should be or two common scenarios for e-commerce sites that Redis is good for. Now, the first scenario is saving a shopping cart. So shopping carts are a classic example for session storing. Now, session storing and session caching are two completely different things. Don't get those confused. OK, so. It's, it's a good example for session storing. So in order to save a visitor shopping cart, the visitor will need to log into the site. After the visitor logs in, all of their shopping history can be stored and persisted as needed. Now, because e-commerce shopping carts need to have persistence, but does not need to save the data permanently, a flexible key value store like Redis is a much better choice over a traditional relational database like MySQL. Now the second scenario is improving session speed. Okay. So let's say that our website or our e-commerce is going to be heavy on images. It's going to use tons of images, right? And it, it includes uh, several client side scripts, which can be slow to load content. Okay. I don't think this one uses a, a tons of client side scripts. I think it uses a couple, but Anyways, that's beside the point. So in order to increase our increase our uh, website's loading time, we're going to be implementing implementing session caching in Redis, meaning that once they log in, the, for, once they visit the page for the first time, we're going to cache in things like the HTML page, our files, our scripts and image files. Now that might take some time for the very first time they log in, but next time they, they go into our site, it'll use our cache, which is in the Ram. It'll, it'll look in the Ram first and be like, Hey, we already have those files. Let's just spit those out before even going, hitting our server, which is great, which is pretty, it's, it's fast. It's extremely fast. So that's why those are two common scenarios why we'd be using it. And for, for our max coin application, the one we're going to be doing today, we're going to be using it as a database in our mini shop, our e-commerce uh, application. We're going to actually be using it as a uh, session to keep our sessions alive. All right. So let's get right into it for uh, max coin. So the first thing we need to do is I'm going to be using Docker again for Redis to actually run Redis. Now I will have descriptions down below on how to actually, or where to go to download uh, uh, Redis and implement it in your local machine. But honestly, guys, Docker is so much simpler to just run things. It's super fast and it's just simple. All right. <laughs> Especially if you don't want that file in your, in your, uh, your local machine, or you don't want that, uh, executable in your local machine. All right. So I'm over here petting my desktop when I said that, I don't know why. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say Docker pull, and we're going to pull in the Redis image and we're going to get the latest, whatever the latest is for Redis. And then after that's done, we're going to do Docker run because we need to run a container and I'm gonna name it dash dash name Redis. And I'm actually be porting, mapping our ports. Now I'm gonna map my seven, three, seven, nine to the default six, three, six, nine. Oh, seven, nine, sorry. Six, three, seven, nine. I don't remember these things. I have it in the side and 
I'm gonna run it in detached mode and what image are we running? Where well, we're gonna be running Redis. Ooh, I see that dash D. There we go. Now if I do Docker PS, I should have two of them running. I don't think you can see that. Let me Okay, right there. You see I did Docker run. Uh that right here. At oh this one, dash D. I missed I, I put a space. And I'm ha I have two images running, our Mongo and our Redis. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, clear that. Now I want to run a GUI interface for Redis to see what what's is, what's inside of Redis, right? So I don't want to be doing that. I don't want to be going inside the container and looking that stuff up. I just want a GUI interface so that way I can look it up. And npm, we could actually install an npm. Why is that hiding? We could install an npm module, and that's called uh, Redis Commander. So I'm gonna just do npm. I dash dash save because I don't want to do it globally. Redis dash commander. Actually, I'm gonna just do dash g so that way we could just run it globally and not have to do it. And I'm gonna have to say it. And I hope you're paying attention because it's not gonna be in the package JSON. It's going to be in my global. I'm gonna have to say it in the docs or in the GitHub when I the README file. Hit save on that or hit enter and let it install. All right, how's uh, I'll come back. I'll come back. I was going to start talking, but I'll, I'll just come back. Oh, well, never mind. It's, it's done. <laughs> Clear. Now let's run Redis Commander and we're going to give it our port. So dash dash redis dash port and our port was seven three seven nine. Oh do I have to do the uh let me actually do redis commander dot c I'm going to leave that there and red dash redis dash port seven three seven nine. Oh well I guess I just have to leave that there. And you can see that it's uh in our browser at let me open that up. And there we go. This is our uh, Redis container or our Redis thing. And nothing, we don't have nothing here. It's just basic stuff that we're using. But let, let's actually put some stuff in here. All right. So that way you can see what what it, what exactly is going on. So this is the a this is the Max Coin project. So make sure you're in the right application for that. So in order to use Redis, we do need to do another npm. I'm just npm i dash dash this time I do save uh, Redis. We need to install Redis, and then we're going to go up here and do exactly the same thing. So I'm gonna do Control D Redis. All right, and down here, let's actually make a little function that will insert stuff into our Redis um, process or instance. So function, and I'm gonna just name it Insert. Insert Redis, Redis, and it's going to take in three things. It's going to take in a client, which we do need to insert a Redis client, the data that we want to insert, and also a callback. I'm going to say B, CB for that. All right. So the first thing is const values, 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 and we're going to set that as an array. And the first thing I'm gonna push in here is values. Now, all right, this is going to be, Redis is, is actually interesting how it works, okay? And I have an example over here of someone using Redis. What the hell? Okay, so we're gonna be using Zad, okay, or Zad. And the way that works is we're gonna give it a key name, basically naming your, uh, I guess you could say, you could think of it as a table, I guess. It's not really a table, don't, don't confuse that as a table, but think of that as a table. We're going to be naming it something. So the first parameter that we need to pass in here is the name of that table and then the value that that comes after it. But the values that come after it is a key value pair. So the, this is going to be the key and this is going to be the value of that key. So it's a key value pair. OK, so and you're going to see exactly how we're going to be doing it. I'm going to cut this out and actually have it like in the side over here. So that way you could keep on seeing what exactly I'm doing. All right. So 
So this, this is why I pushed in values first of all, and you're gonna see exactly why why I'm doing it this way. So values is our key name or our, I'm air quoting here, don't get it confused, as our table name, okay? So let's go, uh, and then we're gonna do object keys because we're getting an object back. And we're gonna just do the same thing we did up there, which is going to be dot for each, for each, and then for each key. We will be, where am I at? Where's my cursor? We will be doing something. And that something is, we're gonna be pushing in our values dot push. And I'm gonna just say data. And then key, oops, key. And we're gonna be pushing one more thing, dot push our date. Damn it. Our key, not date, key. And I misspoke when I said that thing. Let me see, where is it at? Uh, it's going to be value and then key. My bad. I said key value. It's value and then the key. This is the value that we have and then the key that it represents, okay? So let's actually run this and let's see where we're at. Not run it, obviously. <laughs> we're in a function still. We gotta we gotta do it. My bad. So let's create a uh a client first, so Redis client is going to equal Redis Redis dot create client, and we need to connect or tell it the port that it needs to be on. It needs to be on seven three seven nine. Okay. Now Redis client is Redis client dot on. We're going to be on now. On connect. We're gonna be doing some stuff, all right? Oof, what happened there? I'm gonna connect. All right. And I'm gonna put a time on this, all right? I'm gonna see how fast it is. Dot time. And I'm gonna just say Redis. And I'm gonna do that for MongoDB on top uh, in a bit, so Redis. All right, now we're gonna actually console log something valuable. Log. I'm gonna say success fully connected connected to Redis. Now that we're connected to the database, we're gonna actually do a fetch fresh from the API. Same thing we did on top, we're just fetching stuff from the API, which we're gonna get an error or a data back. Why am... All right, there we go. So if there's an error, what we're gonna do is just throw out an error or throw out the error. And now it's actually time to use our function, enter Reddit, and we're gonna do passing in the Redis client because we're gonna be doing stuff in here as well. Now I'm noticing that we didn't use client, so I need to go up here, client.zadd, like that example, is still on the side, so zadd.zadd, and then values, and then the callback or CB. That's what I named it, CB. All right, now, now, now we're using the client. So we're using, we're passing in the Redis client, data.bpi, the data, and it's inside the BPI. And we're gonna get a callback back, which is going to throw out an error or results. Results. If error, throw out an error. This is pretty much standard from now on, right? Console.log. We're going to say how many we've actually uh, entered it. Success. Fully inserted results. results and I need to do it as ticks and not regular there we go results key dash value pairs into redis 
All right, there is that. Now what I want to do is actually um, sort it so that way we have the most, the maximum number on top. All right, so with that I'm gonna use Z range. Redis client dot Z range, and basically this is going to range or give us that that value on top, the maximum value on top, and what what table air quotes again what table do we want to use well we want to use the values the key name i'm gonna start, i'm gonna start saying key name so that way it's embedded into your head what key name or what key name yeah key name do you want to use we want to use the values key name and what do you want to do well we just want to grab the latest with scores and don't worry i will go over what this is because like i said it is kind of a, a little bit confusing on how this works just a little bit just a little bit not that much okay result all right so Z range is actually uh, is going to sort our uh, table by to to lowest from highest using uh, the key the key value which the key is our date right our date the key the actual date so it's going to go from lowest is going to be sorting it by lowest to the highest. All right, so lowest is on top and highest is in bottom. And this next set is, hey, uh, where do you want to start or where do you want to uh, stop and start or start and stop, right? So we just want the last two values that are inside of that because we know that the last two values is our date and our value of the highest value, right? Since it's, it's uh, sorting it by lowest to highest, we know that the last two is the date and the value of the highest, right? And with scores is basically it's another another thing that I'm gonna have to show you when once we get into the GUI, okay? And don't worry, it'll make make much more sense once you see the GUI. Uh, so if error, throw error, console log, log out. I'm gonna say red this max value is I forgot to do the ticks but I'll do that in a bit max value is result one and it was reached on reached on where is it? It was reached on result zero. Let me do these as ticks. Tick right there and a tick right there. And then let's end the time. So console dot end or time end redis. And then redis client dot and so that way we could close out our connection and now let's do the exact same thing with uh, mongodb so up here where's our mongo right here and down here it's going to be our time end and we're going to be renaming this to mongodb all right now let's run it so node test and everything should be working oh we got an error and i said date oops i said date instead of data control save all right let's run it one more time what where where okay successfully okay now let's do it one more time there we go so here's the redis let me actually zoom this in. Oops. All right, here it is. Uh, where is it at? God damn, this is close. This is extremely close. Where is it at? <laughs> here it is, right here. We got zero key value pairs. Okay, whatever. So, wait, okay. I gotta figure that out. Hold on, let's just figure that out because that's not making any sense. I should have had stuff in there. One more. Let me actually see in our right here, refresh it. 
we got something. We got oh, we got stuff. I don't know why. I guess I didn't. didn't mm, never mind. We did get some stuff. But check this out. Let's actually go back here. All right. Let me actually zoom. In. We got stuff. I don't know what happened. Maybe I did it. Maybe I'm supposed to do dot length. Anyway, see right here. Matt Redis, 95 milliseconds and MongoDB and 114. The important thing is that did we get the same amount? Yeah, we got the same value. 10136, 10136, and 202026. 20, okay, we got the same value, so it's actually working. Thank God for that. <laughs> but as you can see, it's a bit faster, and we actually did uh, install it into a database, well, in memory database, which are values. Now, that with scores is this number right here, okay? This number right here, this this number right here. If you know hash maps, then you know exactly what this is, okay? But this is a number right here that's the with scores. And as you can see, that table name, air quote, the table name, the key name is values. And inside values, we got all of this information, which is pretty cool, right? It's, it's really, really cool. So I'm not going to do a whole full tutorial right here. And now it's just that just know that Redis is very important and you should probably learn it. OK, so thank you guys for um, what does this do? I never even. Never mind. Thank you, guys, thank you guys for uh uh what's it called? Oh, watching my video. I thank you for taking time out of your day to watch these videos. I hope you learned something from it because you are spending your time watching this video. So I try my best to uh, give you some knowledge or some something valuable for you to uh for you and your career, I guess. But thank you guys. If you liked the video, please leave a like. Comment down below on what you thought about the video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I greatly appreciate your, su your support and yeah, thank you guys and I will see you in the next video where we're going to be implementing Redis in our mini shop application. So thank you guys, take care and bye.